All right, so for my final project, I actually decided to do a, um, a gaming PC build. Um, in the spring of this year, I actually built my first computer. Um, and I'm actually going to go through the steps that I use to actually build this computer. Um, so one of my friends at my job actually told me about this wonderful website. This is um, PCPartPicker.com. Um, what's really unique about this site is that you can actually go through and pick out all of your different parts. Um, it's going to list different places that they're available from, like to purchase, and it's also going to ensure you that, excuse me, all of your parts are actually going to be compatible with each other. And that's like a really hard thing when you're first like new into building PCs. Um, compatibility can be an issue just because you're not aware of all the different um, sizes and things that can they can work and not work together. So. Um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on view your system build. Um, you're going to go here. And so it's actually pulling up um, a, a build that I kind of was messing around with earlier. Um, so we're actually going to start a new list. And so this is what the, actual, the page would look like whenever you would first log on and you wouldn't have anything there. Um, so the first thing that I kind of like to start with personally is a case. I think a case is kind of essential because that's going to go, it's going to determine the size of your motherboard and from there you're going to like pick whether you want um, Intel or AMD for your CPU. So I always start with the case and then determine the motherboard and then kind of go from there. So let's go to a case, let's choose a case. Um, and so the case I actually ended up going with is an NZXT. It was the S340 Elite. It was the white though? It was this guy right here. And so you can even like select the item. It'll show you like a little picture of it, its price history, um, different reviews. Um, I really like this case. It's really cool. It's got a timber glass on the side so you can see everything uh, on the inside. So you just click here, add a part list, and now it's listed. And so as I was saying earlier, the compatibility check. So this right here is super important. Especially once you start getting all of your all of your pieces together. Um, okay, so from there, I said I like to go to the motherboard. Let's choose a motherboard. Um, let's see. The, ironically, this is actually the one that I chose. It's the top of the list. Um, it is an ATX size, which that just determines like 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 I said. So the case determines what size of motherboard fits into your into your computer um, and that's just going to enable like different things like cooling factors like a micro ATX is going to be a lot smaller so and that's going to be in a smaller case which isn't going to have a lot of airflow which is, it, it can be a problem um, yeah so I actually wrote this guy and this is an AMD chipset so whenever I was looking into this build I was looking um, with the differences between Intel and AMD, or not add to inventory, sorry, add to part list. And I actually ended up going with an AMD. I've never gone with an AMD processor, um, but with this build, I went with the um, uh, Ryzen 1700X. The Ryzen 7 1700X, I think. Yeah, I went with this guy right here. And the reason I went with the 1700X is because the base process, processing speed of it was 3.4 gigahertz, but since it's an X, it's actually an unlocked chip, so it has um, overclock like capabilities. And if you're not familiar with overclock capabilities, it's just like running the chip at a higher speed than its like base is. So like if you actually look right here, he goes. Um, overclock to 3.9 gigahertz since day one, even though the base is 3.4. That's just going to give you a little bit more faster processing speeds. 
And I think I actually am over. What? No capabilities. What? Oh, <laughs> doesn't have a cooler. That's not a problem. We're we're gonna have a cooler. Um. Yeah. So I've actually had my processor overclocked to I think like four gigahertz. I didn't do that right away. Um. It took me a little bit to get that. Um, let's see here. Okay, so the the water cool. I did a water cooler. It's like a an all in one loop water cooler for my CPU because I knew I wanted to overclock this at a higher um, at a higher speed. That means my CPU is going to be running at a hotter temperature. So I wanted to make sure that for the long term, um, my CPU would have a little bit of durability. So I wanted to keep it at some lower temps. Um, so I actually went with the. NZXT to match the case to kind of get some um, aesthetic appeal to it. Um, I went with the NZXT uh, Kraken X62. And it was the, uh, I believe it was the Rev2. Yeah, it was. Okay, we'll add that to the list. And so what's really cool about actually with that water cooler is it's capable, um, I'm sorry, it's not capable, it's compatible with like um, AMD and Intel, and it, it does provide all of the different sockets that can go over um, those CPUs, because whenever you, uh, an Intel motherboard is going to be a little bit different from an AMD motherboard, especially around that CPU chip. Um, okay, so we have a cooler. We have our motherboard, case, processor. Let's go on, um, go on over to memory. This is your RAM, your random access to memory. Um, it's going to help with running and running multiple applications all at once. Um, let's see here. I did, did Corsair. I did just like a basic black RAM. I eventually want to get something that can uh, light up the little RGB. But for the money that I had at the time, we did not do that. Let's see, I just did a 20, 2400, nothing too crazy. RAM is an easy thing to upgrade, so. Um, it's not showing. Let's get rid of the black. Here it is. I did two of these. Add additional memory. Eight gig DDR twenty four hundred. Another Corsair. That should be right there. Same one. Okay, so we have two of those. You're getting close. Um, storage. Okay, so for my storage, the storage is going to be very important. It's going to be where all your data is saved. Uh, your data is saved. Um, there's two different types of storage that you can do right now. Um, so you have um, like an actual hard drive or an HDD, or you have a solid state drive, an SSD. Um, so in your actual hard drive, there's actually an actual, um, there's a physical disk that is spinning and that's going to determine like your write and read speeds and the SSD, it's all digital. Um, so if you actually put your operating system on an SSD, it's going to actually make your boot, um, your boot process way faster. Um, so initially when I built this computer, I actually went with this Western Digital Caviar Blue. Um, it's a terabyte. It's a normal hard drive. Um, it was forty bucks. I was like forty bucks for a terabyte. It has decent reviews. Um, I actually just went with this just because of where it was at on the page. Um, so I, but yeah, like I said, I initially only had that, and then I went back and I actually bought another um, Western Digital um, two hundred and fifty gigabyte solid state drive. Um, and then I actually transferred my operating system over to that. Um, 
And I gotta say, that's probably one of the best things that I've ever done. <laughs> um, let's see here. 2.5. Mm. Where you at, dude? Can I do how much? I can search it. Here it is. Okay, yeah, it was like 52 bucks, yeah. All right, so it's your CPU, cooler, RAM, storage. I think the only things that we need left are going to be the video card and the power supply. Let's do the power supply and the video card last. So the power supply, um, when I initially went through this, um, I knew... I had already had my, um, uh, I'm sorry, Blaken. Uh, my graphics card was already chosen, so I knew how much power that basically my entire PC was going to take up. Um, I actually went with just uh, this um, Supernova 650 EVGA power supply. Um, it's an 80 plus gold efficiency, 650 watts total. Um, that's more than enough for me to be able to run this computer, and it also gave me a little bit of. Um, legroom just in case I added some extra features or actually chose to swap out on my graphics card. So go ahead and choose that one. And then the video card. So the video card is what a lot of people like to kind of be a little fanatics over. Um, everyone probably wants the newest hottest video card that's out there on the market. That wasn't the case for me. Um, I was on very much so on a budget for this. Like the fact that I could even put this much money into a computer at the time was a lot for me. Um, so I knew at the time, whenever I was building it, the um, the GTX 1080 was the highest thing at the time, and I <laughs> I was not trying to put six hundred dollars into a graphics card. So I actually looked into the 1070s, which is just like one one step under. And I found this um, EVGA for the win gaming graphics card, and I really I really like the for the win gaming because I like the specs, everything about it that I like. There was good reviews, etc. Um, it was four hundred and eighty. Granted, I could have put like another hundred hundred and fifty dollars and got the ten eighty, but just something I didn't have at the time. And another thing that I really liked about this. As you can't really see it here in these pictures, um, maybe in this one, but right there, it's upside down, but it, it does it does say for the win on your graphics card, and eventually you'll actually be able to see this whole PC built together with all the RGB, and it looks really cool. Um, regardless, I went with this graphics card. It was It's an awesome graphics card. It does exactly what I want it to do. So we're going to throw that in. And that, that is about everything. So, let's see here. We have our power supply. We have a case. We have a video card. We have our storage. We have two different types of storage, um, which is going to be really nice in our boot process with that SSD. We have our memory. We have our motherboard and a CPU cooler along with our CPU. And that's essentially everything that you need. Um, I mean, you are going to need an operating system, but most people already have Windows 10 through like um, an older account. Or if you need another operating system, you can just go buy that through Microsoft um, Microsoft Store. Um, I actually already had a monitor laying around in my house, so um, let's see here. So yeah, so the total of this build is actually it's twelve sixteen oh five. Um, if anyone was like looking to like build their first computer and have this much money laying around, this is a, a solid build. Um, I do a lot of things with my computer. Uh, I, I play a bunch of video games because that's what I like to do in my spare time. I also I actually stream. I, I, I stream to twitch.tv. Um, really cool. 
and this does more than more than enough of what I need it to do. So but yeah, so this is uh, PCPartPicker.com. Um, here, our compatibility check is completely green, so we I know that whenever I order all of these different things, either through Amazon or Outlet PC or Newegg, that whenever they all get here, they're all going to work together. So that means that I can just look through the manuals and learn how to install everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and please, if you have any questions, um, refer to my GitHub.